Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number four, and I'm going to discuss the electric field of a square wire. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com, and if you'd like updates or news on my videos or all my postings, you can follow me on Twitter at AdamBT503. So, the previous video to this, which is relevant, is number 3A, where I discussed the field, the electric field, of a wire which had sym symmetry. And in 3B, I discussed the electric field of a wire without symmetry. And as you'll see in a moment, we will require this video in order to do the current video. So, let's pose the problem for this particular, for this particular video. So, what we're talking about, and you have to excuse my, my drawings, okay, we're talking about a square wire, four equal line segments with the length of each wire or inch, each, excuse me, line segment being A. What we're trying to do then is measure the electric field produced by these four line segments or wire segments at a point perpendicular to the plane. Let's we'll say I'm going to call it the z-axis at point P. So we see that the, the wire op op occupies the x-y plane and we're trying to measure it. We're trying to measure our um, we're trying to measure the field in the, the z-axis. Now, if you think about it, and you may have seen this in the previous video, that if somehow you're able to set up your coordinate system such that, we'll say x is equal to 0 is the center of your line segment or an individual line segment, then the line segment extends from plus a over 2 to minus a over 2, which is what we did actually in the previous video, and I'll discuss that in a moment. So if you do that, you'll see that um, we're going to have the, the exact same symmetry as for the individual line segment with symmetry. So what that means, for example, is, let's say we take, take any point, an arbitrary point here. There will be a corresponding point somewhere else on the, uh, somewhere else on the, um, on the wire, but some of the unit vectors will have changed signs. So let's go through P, and we come back down over here. So this, that, that might be the corresponding point to there, or we might we might take a point here, so it might it might do something like this. There'll be a corresponding point there. So my point, it might it, the the purpose here is to show you that there there is symmetry. So if one of them corresponds, for example, in the positive x, it's 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 uh, it's mirror will con contribute in the negative x to the same magnitude. So the point is all the horizontal components will cancel. And yeah, and because we're talking about the wire occupying x y the x y plane, then any any uh, components in the x or y planes, the x y or y axis, excuse me, will cancel. So when we talked about the single line segment like this, let's say we orientated it such that the line segment corresponds or, co or coexists or is coincident with the x axis. What we did was we put the z axis in the center of the wire. So the wire went from minus L to plus L and we put the origin X is equal to zero in the center like that. So that there's our z-axis and we're trying to measure the field produced by the wire at point P. So how we did it was we extended to the, the wire like that. We defined an angle theta and what we found was that the because of the symmetry all the horizontal components in this case in the x-axis were going to cancel so what we did was we integrated from 0, x is equal to 0, to x is equal to L, and we found the field in this area here, uh, in the z-axis, and then we multiplied it by 2 in order to account for the field on this particular side from 0 to minus L. And that's exactly what we have here, but we, instead of having one line segment, we in fact have four line segments. So just to go back to the, uh, just to go back, we had with our terrible uh, art. Okay, so let's say from here to here is the line segment, the, the, is the individual line segment. So, we'll say in the previous video, this here would have been point P. However, this time round, and, and it would have went, and it would have been 90, 90 degrees there. But then in this time round, we're saying point P is an actual fact here. So the separation vector is no longer from here to here. Separation vector, in actual fact, is from here up. Notice, of course, that the separation vector, let's say we call it, just for argument's sake, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and there's the z-axis. It means that your separation vector, which, I, which I've called squiggle, 
is going to have a component in the x, the y, and the z axes. So what that means, we need to find out the vertical component, or we need to get rid of two components, namely the x and the y component. But if you think about it, both the x and the y component, in, er, with respect to the z-axis, are horizontal components. So what's going to happen is, we're going to get a, a situation similar to what we had with this the single line segment, where we had theta, let's say this is the z-axis, this was, let's say, the x-axis. So we had theta there, and let's say the horizontal component uh, was 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 sine, or the excuse me, the horizontal component was sine. So the only contributing component was the cosine, or the vertical component. But because we have two axes that are in the horizontal, or two axes which will have horizontal components, we'll be using cosine twice in order to uh, to account for both the x and the y axis. Now, in the video on uh, in, the, in the previous video we had the following formula for the electric field of wire in only, with only one dimension. So it, is, it was in the k-hat direction, by the way, and I'm going to define 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 with the placeholder k, not to be confused with the vector or the unit vector k-hat. So we had k, we had lambda z, and um, we had, sorry, 2k, 2k lambda z, and we had 1 over z and with the square root of z squared plus l squared. Now this time however we're going from instead of going from minus l to plus l we're going from minus a over 2 to a over 2. So our l is going to become a over 2. But what's, our, what's going to happen with our, our z? Well if you think about it let's just, just looking at this one, one more time. If let's say, say that's my line segment, and in one dimension, we'll say if we had a p, it would have, would have been there, right, like that. Okay, we've seen that. But at the moment, p is an actual fact over here, and a separation vector is 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 over there, right? So I'm going to draw the separation vector in black. There's my separation vector, right? So we first of all need to get this sep this this particular separation vector here that I'm drawing now corresponds to corresponds to here, but we need to add another component because we'll say we're after getting into the y-axis like this. So if you actually look at it, it's just a small bit of Pythagoras. You'll find that the transformations are as follows. We see that L goes to A over 2 and Z goes to the square root of Z squared plus A over 2 to be squared. So if you plug in those we get the field for a single wire, okay, single line segment. So the field is going to be equal to k, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, lambda a, now because it's going to be twice uh, a over 2, we'll say z is, uh, is going to be twice a over 2, okay, and we're going to get to divide by z squared, plus a squared over 4 square rooted and finally uh, and finally z squared plus a squared over 4 plus a squared over 4 so that's the z squared plus the l squared right now that's the field for one wire so in order to get the field for four wires, of course, we need to multiply by four. But we also need to account, uh, account for the fact that it's got this y component. It's no longer just got an x component. So we, we, once, we have to, excuse me, once again, multiply by cosine theta, which was z over the square root of z squared plus a squared over four. Putting it all together, the total electric field, oh, by the way, it's in the k-hat direction. The total electric field then is going to be k, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, 4 lambda az divided by z squared plus a squared over 4. And we also have the square root of z squared plus a squared over 2. And this, like I said, is in the k hat direction. All right. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.